I'm Eric Grenier of TheRed.ca, and here's everything you need to know about this year's provincial election in Ontario. All right, voting day will be on June 2nd, and any Canadian citizen over the age of 18 and living in Ontario will be eligible to vote. You can vote advanced polling, you can also vote by mail. Just head to Elections Ontario's website to find out how and where you can vote in this year's election. Now, there are 124 ridings spread out all across Ontario, and the average population in these ridings is somewhere around 120,000 people, though it's smaller in northern Ontario and larger in southern Ontario. Now, the province uses the first-past-the-post electoral system, just like every other province, just like in a federal election, which means that the candidate who has the most votes in a riding will become the next member of provincial parliament, or MPP. Now, let's go through some of the major parties. There are the Progressive Conservatives, led by Doug Ford. He's been leader of the party since 2018 and was elected premier in 2018 as well. So this is a first-term government for the PCs. And Ontario doesn't really have a history of single-term governments being defeated. There's actually only been one in the last century. This was Bob Ray's NDP government from 1990 to 1995. So usually Ontarians give a party at least one more shot. Now, the Progressive Conservatives are a typical center-right party in Canada, similar to other conservative parties across the country. Their support tends to be stronger in rural areas and suburban areas of the province, and they tend to have more support among men and older Ontarians. Then there are the New Democrats. Now, they have been the official opposition since 2018. They're led by Andrew Horvath, who has been leader of that party since 2009. Now, the New Democrats have only governed once in Ontario's history. That was that Bob Ray government. But they have formed the official opposition on a number of occasions in the 1940s, the 1970s, and the 1980s. The New Democrats have their origins in the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation, and they're a center-left party, much like other NDPs uh, throughout Canada. They have their support primarily in urban areas, in industrial centers like Windsor or Hamilton, and they tend to have higher support among women and younger people in Ontario. Then there are the Ontario Liberals. They are led by Stephen Del Duca. He's been leader of that party since 2020. The Liberals are actually the previous government. They were defeated in 2018. They governed between 2003 and 2018 under Dalton McGuinty and Kathleen Wynne. The Liberals also governed Ontario for most of the province's first 40 years, but since then they've actually only governed three times, once in the 1930s and 1940s, once in the 1980s, and then that most recent government under McGuinty and Wynne. The Liberals tend to be a centrist, centre-left party, though it depends on the election. At some times they've actually been to the right of the PCs, at other times they've been to the left of the NDP. Lately, they are really competing for votes with the New Democrats, particularly in the GTA. They have more support in urban, suburban areas, eastern Ontario, and generally in the past and in recent elections as well, among Franco-Ontarians. Now, the PCs, the Liberals, and the NDP are the three major parties, but there are also the Greens. They won their first seat back in 2018. Mike Schreiner was the one who won the seat. He's their leader, and he's been there since 2009. The Greens have been around since the 1980s, and they're an environmentalist party like we see in the rest of Canada, as we see with Green parties in the rest of the world. And they have support primarily in the area where Schreiner was elected, in Guelph, but also in the Georgian Bay area and other parts of Midwestern Ontario. There are two other parties that are going to have incumbent candidates on the ballot. This is because they had MPPs that crossed the floor from the PCs to these new parties. There's the New Blue Party under Jim Carajalios and the Ontario Party under Derek Sloan. There are also two dozen parties that are registered with Elections Ontario, everything from the Libertarians to the None of the Above Party. You should go to Elections Ontario's website and you can check those out. So let's review what happened in 2018. The Liberals were the incumbent government. Kathleen Wynne was the premier. She was very unpopular. Her approval rating had sunk to under 20%, and her party was trailing the PCs in the polls really for the last few years. They were in second place, however. The New Democrats were in third. PCs at the time were under the leadership of Patrick Brown, but he had to resign in early 2018 due to allegations of scandal, and he was replaced in a very quick leadership race by Doug Ford. Didn't really change the dynamics of the polls, the PC still led going into that campaign, but what happened during the campaign in 2018 is that the Kathleen Wynne Liberals really tanked. A lot of their vote went over to the New Democrats, who rose into second place, and for a time during that campaign were actually vying with the PCs for leading in the popular vote. But what happened on election night was that the PCs were elected with a big majority government. Let's go over the results. PCs won 76 seats in that election. The New Democrats took 40. The Liberals took only 7, which robbed them of official party status in the Legislative Assembly. And the Greens won a single seat. The PCs won the most of the vote with 40.5%, which was a gain of about 9 points from the 2018 election. But the New Democrats also saw a big gain. They gained just over 9 points as well, taking 33.6% of the vote. 
The big loser was the Liberal Party. They dropped 19 points. They took just under 20% of the vote. It was the worst result in the very long history of the Ontario Liberal Party. Though the Greens, though they did actually win their first seat, the first seat they've ever had, they took just 4.6% of the vote, which was less than in 2018. Heading into the beginning of the 2022 election campaign, PCs were leading in the polls, the Liberals were doing better than they were back in 2018, but were fighting for that second spot with the New Democrats. This election is going to be decided across the map, but the most important place is the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area. More than half of the seats in the province are located in this part of Ontario, and whoever does win in the GTA is likely to win the election. So what will be the big issues of the 2022 Ontario provincial election? Well, the PCs now have a record. They've been in power for four years, and they're going to be judged on how they handled the COVID-19 pandemic. And they and the other parties are going to be judged on their plans to lead Ontario into a post-pandemic recovery. Some other issues that have been really pulling high heading into the election campaign has been inflation, housing affordability, health care. So we're going to hear a lot of talk about those issues as well on the campaign trail. One of the other dynamics that's important in Ontario is what's going to happen with progressive voters. Voters who are against the PC Ford government, will they remain divided between the New Democrats and the Liberals or will they get behind one party in a way that happened in the 2018 election when a lot of those voters went behind the New Democrats? Not enough to defeat the PCs, but enough to push the Liberals into a distant third. But in the end, it's always tough to predict what the ballot box question is going to be. For me, in every single election, it comes to a question of trust. Who do Ontarians trust to lead them for the next four years? We'll find out on June 2nd. For TheRit.ca, I'm Eric Grenier. Thanks for watching.